Hi everyone, Eden here and welcome to the Stronger Together channel, where my goal is to cultivate a supportive and enriched community for early career women in data science. The subjects that we talk about on this channel are specifically designed to provide meaningful advice and tools to help you be successful in your career as a data scientist or in general. And in this series, we are focusing on women of Google. We have our guest today, the beautiful Michelle Holko here, who is one of my colleagues on my team at Google. And she's just another one of the many fantastic women around here. And we are gonna spend today just learning a little bit more about her. And so we can go ahead and kick off by just telling us a little bit about your role at Google, it's a little bit different than mine and Mona's that we had in previous videos. So yeah, go ahead and tell us a little about your role and about yourself, Michelle. Awesome. Thank you so much, Eden. This is so fun to be here and to talk to everybody. So yeah, Eden and I are on the same team. My role is called a principal architect, which is similar to Eden and Mona, but I added an scientist to the end of my title because I think it addresses a little bit closer to, you know, where I'm coming at the role from as a domain expert in healthcare. And so as a principal architect, I am mostly thinking about the public sector in the organization that we're in, Google Public Sector, mostly thinking about the federal agencies and any of the organizations in the public sector that do anything related to healthcare or science and research. Cool. And would you fancy yourself a cloud expert or are you really bringing that domain expertise of your healthcare knowledge to the team here? Yeah, definitely the latter. I have used cloud in my research and have certainly done a lot of training in cloud on all three of the major platforms. And so I'm coming at more as a domain expert from seeing how do researchers want to use the cloud? How could they use the cloud? How could the cloud help them actually do more important and breakthrough research. Awesome. Yeah, that's really a critical component because we being a team, we all come in with our different areas of expertise here. And so you may be an infrastructure person, you may be a domain expert in a certain area. All of that is fine. You don't necessarily need to be an expert in cloud before you come here. You just need to know about the value of cloud in general and your domain and how it's used and be able to tell that story. Would you say that that's accurate? That's accurate. And also a key ingredient is willingness, willingness to learn. And so there's a lot of wonderful training that gets unlocked when you come on board at Google and you have the opportunity to really dig into it and start to go deep on identity and access management, if that's your jam. So it's, it's really fun to continue that learning process. Sure. Yeah. That cross-functionality piece as well. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how you actually came to Google, starting from higher education until now, your, your career journey. Yeah, absolutely. So I started out as a scientist. I'm a PhD scientist in genetics, and I was, for my PhD, working in the lab at the time when we were starting to do more functional genomics, looking at more than one gene at a time. And you know, now we have next generation sequencing that allows you to look at all of the genes. But at the time I was working on a technology called microarray, which meant that you could look at thousands of genes at the same time. So basically I got to the end of my PhD and I had a large data set and I had no idea what to do with it computationally because I wasn't taught how to be a data scientist. We didn't actually talk about data science at that time. And so I was doing a lot of like trying to train myself around bioinformatics and data science. And so for my postdoctoral fellowship, I moved into doing that more rigorously. So I started to learn how to code in R and started to build packages to promote reuse and reanalysis of data and what we call meta-analysis or putting different data sets together that have already been published. And I really became fascinated in that space, you know, this, this intersection between the way technology really accelerates what we're able to do in research and then how we make sense of it all from the data side of it. So because of that, I had this unique skill set and didn't really want to stay in academia. So I ended up from my postdoctoral fellowship going to NIH, uh, the National Institutes of Health. And there I was a staff scientist with the National Center for Biotechnology Information or ABI, helping them with one of their primary data archives. So whenever you're a scientist and you get a grant to do your work, you have to make those data publicly available after that grant is finished. And so these primary data archives hold genomics data and all different kinds of data. So I was working with the group that was holding the functional genomics data. 
and I was helping them to build tools to promote reuse and reanalysis of the data. And so one of the things that I learned when I was there for about five and a half years was that the way we were using the technology it just didn't feel super innovative to me. And I was really interested in innovation in that space. So I then moved after about five and a half years there to Booz Allen Hamilton, which Eden and I both, we'd, I'm not sure if we crossed paths or were there at the same time, but I was at Booz Allen for about six years. And, you know, initially I was kind of helping to build strategic innovations around genomics and genetics and biomedical research data. But I ended up mostly at DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, which is a part of the DA that funds really big, large scale, go big or go home, huge ideas kinds of research. So they're famous for inventing the internet, for doing lots of robotics competitions and things like that. So I was working in the, the newly formed, it was only one year old, the Biological Technologies Office. And I was actually working on their Prevent the Next Pandemic portfolio, interestingly enough, <laughs> way before COVID. Yeah, so we were funding Moderna. We were doing a lot with wearables at the time, which was really interesting. So that's kind of how I got interested in looking at wearables data. And then after several years there, I moved back into government as a federal employee, as a presidential innovation fellow, which is an amazing program. If anybody is interested in federal service, please take a look at that and other opportunities to do civic tech service in the government. The PIF program, the Presidential Innovation Fellows Program, is celebrating its 10-year anniversary this year. Um, it was started in the Obama administration by Todd Park, the then CTO. And it's a, a program that tries to bring people in to the government from the private sector from the big tech companies. So they often recruit from Google, Amazon, Facebook, all of the big companies, and they bring people into a leadership role in the government. So if you're familiar with the government scale, you come in as a GS-15, which is pretty much as high as you can get without being a senior executive. And in that way, you're able to really affect change and provide leadership to the government around tech from a fresh perspective of just having been in tech. And so I was in the government in that role starting in October, 2019, before COVID hit, working with the All of Us program at NIH, and then COVID hit. And so obviously, since I had been working that portfolio at DARPA, I got looped into a lot that was going on across five or six different agencies. So it was a pretty heck and also amazing time to see the way that the government agencies came together around Operation Warp Speed and really made things happen and made the science move quickly in a way that doesn't usually happen. And so that's where I was when a friend who was at Google at the time reached out and said, hey, are you interested in potentially coming to Google? And so that's why I'm here now. Okay, so you were dead set on getting into Google. I wonder if it wasn't on your radar specifically as a next step, what kind of thought process did you go through to thinking about actually taking that next step to apply? And what was your perception of what a Googler was and if you would fit into that, even if that's changed since you've been here? Yeah, I, I would say I didn't really have a lot of preconceived notions about what Google was like as an organization or what a Googler was or, or should be. And I think that was actually really helpful for me because I was able to follow the interview process. And through the interview process, you learn a lot about what what it means to be Googly. And I just came to it as kind of a student of that. And now that I'm here, I fully embrace those concepts of, you know, respect for persons, respect for opportunities, you know, really leading yourself in a way that is respectful and thoughtful and, you know, consensus building. I, I truly embrace that. And it's organizationally, I think that Google does an amazing job of encouraging that across all of the various pieces of Alphabet. I mean, it's a huge company. And I think you know, to say, what is a Googler? It kind of depends on what organization you're in, right? So I think that's another thing to consider when you're looking at any opportunity is, you know, talk to the people that are already in that team, in that organization, and, you know, get more details and information that way. Gotcha. Yeah. So did you spend much time preparing for the interviews, researching what are good things to kind of study before you came in or? Yeah, I did. I definitely did. I actually probably spent the most time watching YouTube videos about the the question deduction answer where you're given a problem and you're, you're, you're meant to like talk through your thought process of, around how you would approach it. And there's a very specific methodology that's encouraged there. And I it wasn't something that I would have come to without 
you know, watching those videos. So I think that that's important to note. On the Googliness side, that felt actually pretty straightforward. And it was very similar to the leadership principles that the Presidential Innovation Fellowship embodies. And so that was pretty straightforward and natural for me. And then the technical one was a little bit different for me because I was coming into this new kind of domain expert role. So the traditional customer engineer questions were were not what I was given. And so that was, I didn't really have to study as much for that because I think that was kind of built on what I already already knew. But I did look into a lot more of like the Google Cloud specific stuff that was relevant to my domain. And I think that was really helpful. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So interesting. And yeah, I think, you know, there's, there are those role related knowledge questions that I think there's only four or five different categories you can choose from. I don't think you fit into any one of those, right? That's right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So very interesting. It just goes to show that there's no specific picturesque Googler. We are all different shades of gray and blue and green. And, you know, there's no kind of, at least for me, I, I had a very specific image of what a Googler would be like really awesome coder and, you know, young and just super smart and Harvard graduate. And that is so not the case <laughs> since I've been yeah. here. That is in fact rare to, to find that person. Yeah. Diversity is really critical. Yeah, absolutely. So what advice would you give to other women in tech who are thinking or maybe should be considering a career at Google that helped you get here? Yeah, well, first of all, I think that the way I ended up here was through my network. And I think your network is a really important part of your career, not just where you are now, but it's mostly where you want to be next. And I think that's a really important thing to consider. Start networking now. It's never too early to start networking. I use LinkedIn a lot to reach out to people directly to kind of create that kind of community where you're putting out your ideas and allowing people to see that and comment on it. So you know, definitely use your network. And then the other piece of advice that I have is reach out to Googlers directly. And it it really doesn't hurt to uh, do that. And we are all open to that. So, you know, figure out how to find us on LinkedIn and that's your first assignment and then reach out to us. I think that's that's great advice. And then the, the other piece of advice that I give to everybody about careers is just do good work. You know, wherever you are, whatever you're working on, try to do your best, even if it's not something that you're really passionate about. If you do good work, then you can start to define like, what is it that you're passionate about? What role do you want to be in? And then use that good work, stand on it to be able to get and move to that place that you really are going to feel more satisfied. So I think it's just really important to wherever you find yourself to try and dig in and have an open spirit. Yep. Even if you're miserable and you hate your job right right now. (laughs) <laughs> just put a smile on get through it you really never know who that next person is that's going to lead you to your dream job um whether it's at google or someplace else you never know uh well michelle it has been so fantastic just getting to hear your story and to give just another brilliant insight into all the fantastic women and people in general who work at google and their unique journeys of getting here i really hope that everyone who's watching this video learned something And I will go ahead and put, if it's okay with you, I can put your LinkedIn profile link in the description of the video and you can reach out to her. We are all Googlers that is part of our culture is to help people out. We will take time out of our day to talk to you. So that's just part of being Googly, which you don't find that everywhere. So I'm proud to be a part of that and I'm proud to be part of Michelle's team. And thank you so much, Michelle, for your time today. Thank you. All right. Thanks everyone.